My name is Lee Ladere. I'm an artist from New York City. The way I would describe the work is it uses photography and film to, in a way, map social relationships, map individual psychological relationships, relationships to media, and in a way, in a way, I try to look at how image relations imbricate human relations in a sense. So, um, always taking the personal photograph or the personal film, the personal articulation of some way, and placing that within a social context. In a way, what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm making a sort of private realm of desire, a fantasy of all this stuff, and introducing it into a public sphere that we're kind of inured to, in a sense. I mean, it's very, very common um, that we see sexualized, very provocative images out in our daily life, in advertisement, in film, um, television, all of these things. It's, it's, not, it's not that they don't occur so much, it's that in the realm of the art world they tend to be suppressed, I think. With the work with my mother, I ended up initially returning home one Christmas and hadn't seen her for some time. She formerly had been a professional ballerina with the New York City Ballet, and then in her early 50s she started dancing as a stripper, actually, and began to sexualize herself in a very, very extreme way and project that as a sort of persona. And so, basically, I arrived home one Christmas, not having seen her for maybe a year at that time, and she answered the door to me and was entirely naked. And this was a sort of announcement of what she was up to in her life at that point. So almost to say, take it or leave it. In a sense, it was a sort of submitting me to a very, very complicated relationship, both between myself and her, but also within the broader context of our family. So how my grandparents felt about this, how my brother felt about this, all of these, all of these relationships, which in a way get mapped out through the work. The proposition was to either continue a relationship with her in a non-judgmental way where I could try to or an attempt to understand how she was using herself, how she was projecting both to the camera but past the camera to an audience to challenge a certain expectation of how she should behave or complicate her position in relation to these values and by doing so actually raise questions about the nature of those values that people were projecting onto her. So I began photographing her at that time. In a sense, I mean, there's a complicated relationship be between desire within the photographs, um, which in turn is made more complicated by the fact that I'm her son in this specific body of work. In a way, the project is a sort of, could never have been conceived in advance. It happened over eight years of time, and for that reason, there are many, many different emotions and many different sort of layers of of understanding and intention within it. So at certain moments, the camera was a distancing device. At certain moments, she was using it as a way of, as a sort of apparatus and using me to project that past, a kind of portrait of herself or some complication, maybe an antagonism even to an audience or in specific to her father. In a sense, she's submitting me to a certain set of conditions, um, projecting onto me a kind of identity or a sort of persona of inappropriate desire, which I then take up in the work. So in a way I go along with what she's projecting onto me in a way that becomes very, very complicated. That's to say there's a kind of knowingness about my own position, there's a self, self-reflection about my own position in relation to the making of all of these images. At the same time, it enacts a literal set of, set of relationships, actions that become very, very compl complex. So where that sort of art and life come together, it's meant in a sense to not be a prescription of how people should live their life or behave, but rather be a des description, a kind of complication that's meant to ask questions or question the sentiments that are ex expected of us in a certain sense. In the work with my ex-wife, I had been married to her for five years and we had been divorced for five years, at which point I asked her to go with me to a sort of remote cabin in upstate New York and spend four days with me. And over the course of those four days, I ended up making 500 photographs or so. Two months afterwards, she 
revisited the same same location, but that time with her current husband. And he happens to be a photographer as well and ended up making making a set of images of her over over four days as well. So there's there are really these two sets of images in conversation with each other. And so while every image in that project, which I think it's something over just roughly over a thousand images, um, every one of those images is an image of her. So she becomes a kind of structural core of the project in a sense. Um, yet because of the dialogue between the two images, that each one of those images of her is the outcome of a very, very specific relationship. One, the newlywed relationship of her and her current husband set against the relationship, the sort of exhausted version of that that her and I had. So in a way, there's a meditation on the image and a questioning of, of photography or a sort of phenomenological aspect of photography, but always looking at it as a, as a relationship, as a sort of circuit between two people articulating something to a third person. So that's present even within the work with my mother very, very strongly. It's really to get people to talking, and to begin speaking about these things and to, and to discussing their relationship to sexuality, but also how that, how that occurs set within other social frameworks that, that exist. And the relationship of, of women within the work or the work to women, it's stemming out of the work with my mother. So I've taken it up again and again and again. Um, in that sense, I also implicate myself within the work, you know. So the question of my relationship to that, my relationship to feminism, which I'd certainly consider myself a feminist, but it, but it is a complicated understanding of that. It's not cut and dry and it's not meant to be politically correct. In a way, it's meant to kind of raise these questions that oftentimes exist in a cultural blind spot that we don't address or that we feel uncomfortable, too uncomfortable to address. Mm -hmm.